Hi guys, uh, today we're doing another Photographers in Isolation uh, Talking Cameras, and today I have my friend Michael. Uh, he is the founder of the Analog Forever magazine. How are you doing today, Michael? Doing good, uh, except that everything above my house is on fire. Oh, so. <laughs> well, hopefully it's, <laughs> hopefully it's not too close to your house. Not, not too close. <laughs> so uh, you've been doing Analog Forever, I guess, for uh, two issues now, and I really appreciated you sending me up uh, one of your issues. Um, I have to confess, I was pretty surprised by it. Um, when people say magazine, they, I expect something about yay thick. Um, that's more advertisements than anything, but, uh, the content in your magazine was really fantastic. Um, I have to admit I've had it for two days and have not even made it to the end of it because I keep going back and, and looking at photos again and reading the articles over, um, what got you started with that? How did this, this whole idea even come up? Uh, well, uh, it's, a, it's a long story, but in short, I ran an instant film zine uh, that was yay high, right? Uh, called Prime, like in 2014. Uh, I did that for a few years, uh, got burnt out, just quit it all, right? That's where I learned a lot of the mistakes that we're not making with this, Analog Forever. Uh, but about two years ago, I called uh, our editor, Michael Kirchhoff, I, who I originally featured in Prime uh, way back when, and said, hey, Mike, you want to run a magazine with me? And this was after a few beers when I was at a bar because I was complaining to my buddy that I was bored. And he said, well, why don't you do a magazine again? So I said, okay. And it was really that easy. He agreed. And I think uh, he, I was surprised that he'd said yes. And I was really surprised that I was running with that idea. And after he said yes, we were both kind of shoot into each other, even though we both already had too much on our plates. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. I just love seeing print. Uh, publications. I, every time I've ever gotten one from a friend that made one, I thought to myself, you know, why isn't there a magazine dedicated to film? I know, I know there's a, what is silver classic grain. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. this, and that's great, but nothing that really caters to United States audience or really international. I feel like that uh, publication is a little isolated over in Europe. Sure. So, um, but yeah, they do great work, but uh, we just wanted to do something our own and have full control and feature who we want, big, small, no name, big name. It didn't really matter to us. We just wanted to feature work that spoke to us and that's it. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, I, was, I was very impressed by how polished it was. Um, a lot of zines and things like that, they're, they're neat and they've got good content, but I opened the front cover to an advertisement from Blue Moon Camera right there on the front page that uh, it's always, they're, they're friends of mine. They're here local in Portland. And so it's always nice to see that. Um, beautiful intro, beautiful table of contents. I mean, if I didn't know that you had put this together yourself, I would have thought you had an, an entire editing team. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we have a whole team, right? So it's not just me and Michael. We have Minnie Ann Kelly. Uh, she's a writer and curator for us. And we have Tim Scott. Uh, Tim Scott is the man behind the design, the print, the proofing, everything. He is the man. He works uh, for them, which is his uh, ad agency and design agency out of Los Angeles. Awesome. Um, going into the project, we had no idea who was going to design it. Uh, we started two years ago and we said, okay, we're going to do a year of content online. Let's generate some views and then it, sell a product instead of giving a, you know, producing a product and figuring out how to sell it. Um, along the way, Tim volunteered to do that, and he just does amazing work. Um, I'm happy that I get to, unlike Prime, where I had to do all the design work, all the articles, all the editing by myself, I now have Michael, Tim, Ninian, and myself. That really makes the process a lot smoother. But all the design cred goes to him. I mean, we had some input, but he's just amazing at what he does, and yeah, uh, would be happier. So. So you mentioned uh, starting out with online content. Um, is there a difference between your online content and your uh, print content, or are they kind of mirrors of each other? Uh, I think I think it depends on the article. I think you know, as you look at uh, analytics on your own website and see what people are doing on your website, uh, I hate to say it, you know, a lot of people don't read more than about five hundred words. Mm -hmm. All right, they just don't. You know, they're on their phone at work, you know, screwing around, uh, passing time. And a lot of those articles, you, when you see the, the heat signature, it starts to fade off after about a thousand words. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of our online content that used to be long, like I think I wrote like a 3,500 word article when we first started, um, has been condensed now to about five, 1,500 words, just because we want to make sure the people who are on our website 
are spending time on our website and doing as much as possible. Uh, you know, our goal is to promote other artists, not to inflate our egos with how good sure. or bad our writing is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so our online, our web, or print content rather, um, I think is a little bit more in depth, uh, but I think it's mostly because we spend a lot more time uh, interviewing and spending time with images because, you know, we have to go through submissions. And I think we really focus on things that uh, really speak to us as individuals. So. Sure. Talking yeah. about submissions, um, do you generally go out and try to solicit artists that you're interested in interviewing, or is it primarily you're hoping that people will submit wanting to be in the magazine? It's both, right? And you kind of hate to say that. <laughs> We're like, oh, yeah, we, we want this artist in the next issue. But the reality is, I'm, not, I'm sure you probably know this, if your deadline is July 1st, everyone submits on July 2nd. <laughs> yes mm -hmm. right because we're artists right yeah. Yeah, this is how it goes so i it's hard because you want to have a, a you you know we're producing a product we're making an investment in something and we're just for normal people with day jobs right sure. like, this is in our profession so we really do try and get a big hitter each issue um you'll notice the gentleman on the cover for last issue right who was uh michael kenna mm -hmm. and he's like a the landscape guy so yeah i think you know, we, we do do that, but then again, you know, we feature artists that no one else knows about, or hopefully not. That, that's our goal to get them out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we do really hope for awesome submissions. And I think the cool thing is we have a respiratory of submissions. So we got about um, two, three hundred submissions. Oh, very nice. Last issue, and probably about sixty of those we held on to, and we told them, hey, you know, we're holding on to it. You don't need to submit the same body of work again, because realistically. Well, what can we do? Two articles a month and sure. then 10 artists in each issue. So we hang on to those. It's not like we're just saying, nope, 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 delete, 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 you know? And we actually respond to every single person that submits. Oh, awesome. I so, know that's always something I hate when I submit to magazines that sometimes you just, well, lots of times you just never hear back and you just have to assume that they decided not to use it. Yeah, yeah. So, and we have a couple different, you know, email templates. You know, I, I won't lie and say you, respond personally to every single person sure, but, we, but at least you get a response yeah exactly so i noticed uh this maybe it was just this issue because i haven't seen the uh previous issue but you had a very strong slant towards black and white photography uh was that intentional or is that just kind of how it turned out uh not intentional at all that's just how it turned out um you know we curate uh as a team you know so it's, you know uh me and michael have a lot of oversight but um, because we're all so different and come from different demographics, different age groups, different socioeconomic classes, we all have a strong bias, whether or not we think we do or not. Mm -hmm. So we, we really try and give each other freedom. You know, we say, okay, these are the artists that from the submissions that I want to feature. And then we, as a team decide, okay, how do we make this evenly between, uh, you know, gals, dudes, um, you know, other topics, landscape, portraiture. Sure. So, um, but this time it wasn't intentional. It's just kind of how it, it came together. Um, I think you'll notice, I, I don't think I've ever done an article on anyone who's ever shot black and white. Oh, interesting. Ever, my whole life. Huh. I, I really, maybe, maybe occasionally, like mm -hmm. in passing, but I think most of the stuff I gravitate towards is super colorful because I'm an instant film guy, right? Sure. So, yeah, that uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, Michael, Ninian, and Tim, um, uh, they're still young at heart, but you know they have a couple years on me and they actually spent time in the dark room. I'm like me, I'm a young man. So... I've never been in a dark room. I know that's blasphemy, right? I run a lot of cover magazine. But, sure. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of how it goes. I kind of grew up in that hipster revival of it. Sure. Of photography. So I, you know, there wasn't, I don't even know where I would find a dark room. It's kind life. of amazing to me, like how many analog photographers will say that, that they shoot a hundred percent analog even and have never actually developed their own film or done their own prints or anything. They're just happy with, with the look in, in a digital medium. And I think honestly, that's great. It's it's fine for things like film to evolve like that. And so I don't think that's anything that that disqualifies you from running an analog mag or, or is even something to be ashamed about. I mean, totally. Yeah, and I think it's weird too. Is like we we featured uh, Lynn, who's now our social media community manager. Thanks, Lynn, for all the work you do. Uh, but uh, we featured her. She actually does digital negatives, right? And then sure. prints them onto like three D uh, like vessels and I, oh, I don't think it really matters to us. This is start digitally and digitally, but we, I think we just care that it's film or analog based or has that flavor to it. Sure. We've been pretty quote pure about it up until now, but I don't think we have a hard 
you know, flagging the ground about that. I think you care more about the artists who are producing work, regardless of how that. I think that's important. I think a lot of magazines get caught up in the, the technics of it. The, mm -hmm. is this film, is this digital? Did you use this type of camera? And none of that really matters. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about what you're trying to get as the end goal and how your end image looks. I mean, I'm, I'm the first to say what I scan most of my film, despite the fact I have a full dark room. And quite often uh, when it's for my professional work, it gets Photoshopped. And I think that's totally fine. Yeah. I, I, it's just faster and quicker. And, you know, yeah. we, it, it's weird because, you know, we shoot film and then we show everyone on Facebook. Right. And it, it's kind of like, well, how else are you going to do it? And uh, a lot of people just don't have the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where do you see Analog Forever going? Um, do you want to continue it kind of in its for current format or do you have plans for, for expansion or changes? I mean, where, where do you see the magazine going from here? You know, I think we're going to just, we want to keep on producing the same exact content that we've been doing in the same formula. I, I don't see that changing for another two years. Um, to put in perspective, issue two just dropped. Uh, we're almost done in the writing phase for issue three. Issue four submissions will start in a few months. Uh, the cycle is very cyclical, and I think it'd be really hard just to break up design uh, and format in the middle of it. Um, especially since we're getting such a good response in its current format. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we want to uh, fix what's not broken. Uh, totally. But at the same time, you know, we, if you go from issue one to issue two, we did make some changes that uh, maybe a lot of readers won't notice. But to us, you know, we spent each of us, you know, 30 or 40 hours looking through every single page of a PDF, you know, going blind. <laughs> and um, yeah, they were noticeable to us. So I think you, we'll get some fine tuning in. Totally. Um, in regards to where we're going to go in the future, um, we printed 750 copies, uh, this issue, we plan to print 750 copies next issue and we'll go up to a thousand each issue next year. Awesome. Um, I want to just keep growing in that increment. I think that type of growth is sustainable. Yeah. Um, but the, our main problem is, uh, the economy, right? I mean, yeah. I, if, if you read my introduction to issue two, you'll see that I basically said some of you guys who bought this magazine didn't know if you were going to pay rent. Yeah. Like that's nuts, right? Like I, I don't live under an illusion that because we're some art magazine that we deserve to live unlike all other businesses. Right. So, um, I mean, it's weird calling it a business, but I mean. But it um, is. It, but if I lose money, how am I going to pay rent, right? Right, exactly. So, um, <laughs> and, and to say lose money, I mean, break even has always been our goal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our goal is never to, to, to profit because, you know, we have day jobs and we really just do it for the love and the passion of the medium. That's right? awesome. That, so, that really shows through too. I mean, looking, you could tell for the writing, for the articles, it was excited and passionate um, that you could tell the person writing, it wasn't just trying to fill out their word quota for an article submission, that they were really excited about what was going on. And it really does come through. I mean, and like I said at the beginning, I had to go back halfway through and start over just because there was so much content there that I felt like if I didn't read it three times, I'm, I would had to be missing something. I mean, it was, That's awesome. yeah, it was really amazing. Like Thanks. I was impressed by that in a way that very few print magazines have got me lately. And maybe I'm just becoming cynical and, but, <laughs> yeah, right. but it was, it was you refreshing. Know that, you know, I, I slept through English class, right? <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're lucky because, you know, I mean, saying there's so much content is funny because like, like I'm going to blame Nini and mostly on this, but <laughs> You know, she did an interview with uh, Fred Lyon, uh, mm -hmm. the photojournalist from San Francisco, and she said, like, she had like six thousand words in this interview. And I was like, <laughs> what? we we had to condense it down so much, and it was hard, totally. to, right? Because like we, you know, we all do it differently, but like my interview process is probably unconventional, right? So I sure we get the submission. I ask, uh, like, I have a template. I say, answer these fifteen questions based on their responses. I then ask more questions, but in line with their answers. I get all those answers and then I reformat chronologically and by topic into sure. an interview, right? Because like, I hate the like, uh, like it's more conversational, right? And uh, yeah. I know it's not like, oh, we a I actually ask these questions in this format. Who cares? Like our, our, we want to yeah. tell their story and you know, that's how I go about it. And you know, maybe in true journalism, that's blasphemy, but I don't care that much. <laughs> that's the great thing about it being your magazine is you don't have to worry about what anyone else thinks about it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I think that the best compliment ever is like when an artist is like really grateful and not like grateful, like thanks for giving me publicity. 
like grateful, but I mean like just super pumped. Yeah. About, and it just makes you feel good because, you know, when you come home and all of us have day jobs, like I've said before, but, you know, I work in the finance industry, which is weird because I'm an artist, but, you know, I have an 11 year old son. Uh, I exercise a lot. And when you're really tired and you have to decide whether or not, like, do I really want to write this right now? Like, I really just want to drink a beer on the couch, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and totally. You know what? This is important. And that's why I'm doing this. So get off your ass and just take care of it. And five minutes in, you're in that artist's world and it just makes all the rest of the day just disappear, really. Totally. So, That's awesome. Good, yeah. So if people wanted to uh, submit to your uh, magazine, how would they do so? Uh, they can go to analogforevermagazine.com. Um, they can follow us on Instagram and Analog Forever Zine. We're really good at posting uh, once a week what our submissions are open for the time being. We do a monthly online exhibition. We invite the curator uh from outside of our magazine every single month generally and they curate based on the topic of their liking uh, so that's a great way to get in front of a um one of the heavy heater hitters in our industry awesome um, and they're always open we do one once a month and then our online call for entries is closed um for the year because we just have too many to write about i mean i think i have sure. seven in pipe um our editorial calendar's out two months wow. um it's so a good we'll, problem to have yeah We'll we'll, uh, we'll reopen that uh, next year probably. Okay. But um, also, like I said, I don't really care about rules. Like, just email us info analog for <laughs> Hey, I don't care that you're awesome. not commissions looking at my stuff. That's fine too. Very so, cool. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, your personal work. Like, what got you into analog? What what wooed you over versus digital or other art mediums? Uh, well, I was a digital guy from like 17 years old to 21, 23 years old. So about uh, 32 now, put that in perspective. So about 10, 12 years ago, I was doing like band stuff and uh, I shot, you know, a handful of weddings. I, I assisted a lot with a buddy of mine, Franklin Lopez, I love you, man. Um, and we, yeah, I probably did 20 or 30 weddings around that time ish. It was a long time ago now. Um, and I hated it. I hated it. Um, I didn't like it. I, you know, I used to like go out with my buds and go to the lake at night and do long exposures and experiment and have fun. And it was loose and it just, and it, it just turned into work and I hated it. Sure. Like, I already had a job. I didn't need another one. So I, I always feel like maybe as artists, we're always trying, trying to see like, how can I make this worth it? And I think we forget that we actually have fun doing it. And like, yeah. I think it's so funny when people say like, I'm working on a series. I'm like, that sounds so terrible. Like you're sure working. it's work. Like that's like, I know it's hard and I know you put blood and sweat into it, but it's like, what about like I'm creating or I'm having a blast or like, hmm. you know, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a weird thing that we say that's kind of ingrained into our culture. I'm yeah. working on a series. It's so weird. I do it myself. Right. Like you get sure. caught up in sure. your community, but, um, that's really anyway. fascinating to think about it that way though. Cause like, I'm sure I've said that a thousand times and, like, yeah. but yeah, it, you could say it a thousand different ways that make it sound like you're having more fun than that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was just uh, writing follow-up interview questions yesterday for uh, an issue for your artist. And she talked about that as a child uh, that she got a camera and she didn't make any work of consequence, but she had a blast. Sure. So I, and I asked her this, this is why I'm talking about. It. I asked her last night in my email, why do you think we lose sight of it? Like, I really want to hear her thoughts. You know, she's been in the industry for, I don't know, 30 or 40 years, she refused to tell me her age, which is badass. <laughs> um, and she'll know who, who I'm talking about when it comes out. But uh, about cool. personal work, you know, I, I gave, I think one day, um, I'm kind of an impulsive dude in general. You know, like I call Michael up for a couple of beers and say, hey, I was running a magazine. And <laughs> but uh, I, one day I just, I think I, I got like an email or I saw the Impossible Project starting up. Mm -hmm. I wish I still had that pioneer metal card because it'd be like oh yeah red. i don't know where it went but um i bought a pack of film um it was terrible it really wasn't that great right <laughs> well, i went yeah. out buddies to the lake took their portraits i had such a wonderful time doing that compared to my digital camera that like the next week or the next day however the story makes it sound cooler i sold all my digital stuff all my l lenses all my flash i had alien bees i had the, the whole thing right I said, screw this. I'm done doing this. I want to have fun. And uh, 
So I did. So then since that day, really, I've shot instant film for probably close to a decade exclusively. Wow. Um, except when I get impulsive, sell all my gear, buy a Mia 7, and then decide I really hate scanning film and sure. go back to uh, Polaroid. It's so you've just stuck completely with the instant then. That's that's kind of uh, unique. I know instant is kind of a uh, analog gateway drug for a lot of photographers, but... Yeah. Uh, I see all of them going to 35 millimeter or oftentimes medium format, but you've just stuck with the instant then. Yeah. You know, I, like, I think it's complicated, right? Cause like, I would love to like go get like some sweet four by five and be out on the beach for two weeks doing like long exposures, like, like Neil's work, mm -hmm. Neil's work. I love it. I know it's not work for that, but um, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff I've always dreamed of doing. But I think uh, I'm also a backpacker and a hiker. And uh, for me, instant is like the easiest way to capture what I'm out there doing. And I think yeah. in a weird way, it kind of complements my, my impulsiveness and also <laughs> the what I'm trying to do out there. Like I'm just having fun. It's not that serious, but sure. like to me, the activity is serious. Like I'm out there to find solitude, to get away from the, to the grind. And it's just like a no pressure way of capturing the adventure that I'm on. And I that's think, super cool. Like in my head, like, you know, like, like, do you ever like look at pictures and you have like a strong bias to them, even though they're not great because of what a blast yeah. you have? Yeah, and, totally. Like, everyone does it. But for me, like, I feel like when I'm in the moment and like you get that shot and unlike other formats, like I look at it and I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, this is great. <laughs> you get so stoked. Like you're on top of the mountain, you're cold, totally. your legs hurt, but like you got this picture and you already know you got it, right? Yeah. You don't you have, have to wait till the dark room three days later. Yeah, that weird anticipation of like, did I fuck this up? right and, uh it, it's great i love it and that's it I, I don't think i have like this weird like long pretentious artist statement about like why i do it it's just something that i do that i feel is me and that's, that's it. super awesome yeah yeah so uh since you're mostly instant have you stuck with impossible project or have you tried the uh the fuji roids too uh just just impossible polaroid awesome uh, I, I mean, I've tried it, the Fuji stuff. I had an Insax 210 wide that I liked, but um, I just, I hate it because it's so cliche, but like, I like the little imperfections. Like, I, <laughs> uh, it, like you never really know what's going to come out and it's surprising and yeah. uh, sometimes it messes up and that's okay because, I don't know, it's kind of a good analogy to my life. So, <laughs> I think that's it's cool. okay to mess up. It's okay. Yeah. Like, so... I I love that your choice of that is is a mirror of your personality. That it's not just you shoot it for th this artistic reason or that technical reason. It's that you've picked that medium because it mirrors you, and I think that's really cool. Thanks, man. I think I'm a colorful guy, and I'm often accused of way oversharing way too soon with all, <laughs> all people that I meet because I'm just like an open guy, and I I know that's kind of off putting, but I think in a way, instant film is also off-putting because it's kind of in your face already because it's sure yeah yeah i can i can see the analog there yeah so let's see what other good questions can i come up with for you here <laughs> um, what um about, uh, go ahead well, you know one thing that's crazy is that like like so i'm an 11 year old i just think it's a funny story right because I, I caught him talking to his mom you know we're not together everything's cool but she texted me the other day and was like, hey, like your son thinks you're famous. And I'm like, dude, like tell him it's like, <laughs> it's like you don't understand, son. Like it's like being a, a pro ultimate Frisbee player. Like no right? one else cares. Mm -hmm. Like no, I, I, you like are a pro Frisbee golf guy and or like I'm a pro hacky sacker. Like no, no one, no one cares except for our, our small group of people. Like, dude, mm -hmm. you cannot be running around saying that. That is not the case. Oh, that's super and funny. I, My, I have a, yeah, I've got a 13 year old son and, and occasionally people I'll run into people in the street and they're like, Oh, Hey, you're so-and-so. And so my son's kind of gotten the same perception, but I'm like, if you're in this tiny little community of film photography enthusiasts, you might have heard of me maybe. Right. Yeah. But that, yeah, like you said, it's like pro ultimate Frisbee. It's like, I might be the, the two time world ping pong champion or something. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 Because like no one at my job knows, right? right. Like, well, they have an idea, right? But like, you know, to them, I'm just, you know, mean suit guy. So, <laughs> right. Which is funny, and which is also funny because, you know, I think, you know, I, I like to say, because I have to be honest, because like I don't want to be accused of like, 
artist guy who's like ultra capitalist banker dude. Sure. You no, know? but I mean, it, you know, I work for a community bank in my local town. It's a good job. They treat me well. We treat our customers well. But um, I always just like to get out in front of that because I was did a portfolio review like a month ago, two months ago mm-hmm. with somebody when we offered them. And they were asking me like, what I do in my day job. We were just talking and she's like, oh, you're a banker? Like, oh, like, <laughs> uh, and I was just like, oh, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, it's how I feed my family. Yeah, it, it's funny that that gets a bad rap. I mean, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just, it's another yeah. job like any other. Yeah, it's just funny, man. It's just <laughs> funny. And uh, I, I like to laugh about most things. So. Totally. Yeah. So from your point of view, what does make a good photo? Like when you take images out there, you've mentioned hiking and, and stuff like that, but uh, what, what defines a good photo? Uh, man, that's so subjective. Sure. Uh, like, for, like for me, like, uh, so like I'm interested in other people's art. That's nothing like mine too. So mm-hmm. like for me, what makes a good photo is like when I had to challenge myself to get somewhere that like most people never get to see. Okay. Like I'm a big believer in like, uh, conservationism. Is that even a word? That's sure. Word I'm use. <laughs> um, uh, of nature and like, uh, getting people out, getting some vitamin D in their system. Like, I think like three years ago, I was super unhappy mm-hmm. and like, I was overweight and I was trying to like learn what it was to be like a man, like, or an adult or whatever. I'm still a young guy, but you know, I'm a millennial. We have to late adolescence. That's how it goes. So, <laughs> We, uh, so I was trying to figure out this. I lost a lot of weight because I wanted to start hiking and I realized it was a lot cheaper to lose weight than it was to buy lighter gear. Oh, sure. So that, yeah. was, that, was, that was like my thought process. So as I started get going like on a mile hike and then 10 miles and then 40, 50 mile hikes, um, I realized that like no one gets to see these places unless they're like in that like backpacker. I, yeah. I go in. It's not like I'm like some instant Ansel Adams, but I think if I can bring just like a little bit of that to people to show them, maybe they'll get outside. Like that's super awesome. Like if I can show them a place that they say like, where is that? I'm like, that's, that's the job. Right. Yeah. And I, I'd rather them get outside and buy hiking shoes and like buy one of my books. So what artists are there out there that really inspire your work? Or is there anyone that, that you look to emulate or really feel like you gain inspiration from? Yeah. Two specifics is one is Mikhail Kennedy. Uh, he did the Passport to Trespass series. Um, he was he was doing that way before I got into instant film, but he was kind of like the punk rock, train hopping, stealing film from Walgreens, uh, you know, guy. And I was like, man, he's just the coolest, right? I was young and I was just like, man, this guy's a rebel. He's doing what he wants. He's shooting instant film in a way I've never seen anyone do it before besides my grandparents at, you know, at Thanksgiving. So uh, it was just really cool. And uh, I bought some of his books and he was really like a prime inspiration, you know, when I was getting into the medium. But I'd have to say that Bastion Callis, um, I always mispronounce your name, Bastion, I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, when I first started the instant film zine, no one knew who I, no one knew who I was. And I emailed like 15 people and I was like, Hey guys, I want to make a magazine. Like, are you guys like down? And this is back from like Flickr days. Like there was no other way really to contact everybody. And his images stood out to me. You know, uh, he is, was on the cover of the very first magazine I ever made in 2014. And since then we've just become friends. But I, I think, you know, I got in trouble for saying this to somebody else who was really big into instant film, but I said, he's the king of instant film. He's better than anybody. And it's probably just my bias, but you know, he's, he's out there in Switzerland and Germany shooting forests and lakes and hiking with his super photographical dog. And, and he's just a solid dude. And I, there's just, so, there's like a pureness and a wholeness to his imagery. Um, uh, it just speaks to me. You know, I highly recommend, you know, checking him out. Super cool. So is there anything in particular that you just absolutely hate shooting? I know you mentioned weddings earlier, but is there anything else? No, no, I don't hate it. I, I, I hate a lot of stuff, right? Don't get me wrong. I, I'm a human being. I, I get in trouble, you know, in that mode. Like I hate, I hate, I hate. Instead of saying I love, I love, I love. Sure. Like, whatever, we get into that mode. But um, hate, like, you know, I always think that shooting portraits is going to be fun. And I enjoy doing it, but I'm never that pumped up on like, 
like I, I don't really do any conception conceptual work so to me sure. it's just kind of like a, like a waste of three dollars <laughs> right <laughs> sure. you're, some, you're doing I it an instant still there. yeah but you know but alternatively you know i i when I'm on trips, you know, I, I do a lot of trips. Um, I'm in California. I'm lucky, right? I went to like Big Sur last month and I went up to the woods, you know, six weeks ago. And when I'm with my significant other, I, I love photographing her. That's super so cool. That's really the exception to that. Uh, sure. <laughs> I, I like it. And I don't know. I, I'm just surprised she hasn't been like, we just quit it, right? At this point. <laughs> my wife will occasionally tell me to quit it. I also have a, uh, Series I may publish at some point of her flipping off my camera because anytime oh, she's so good, it at her, that's what she does. <laughs> Dude, have you seen Bat Dad? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Dude, you feel like Photo Dad, but like Bat Dad. That'd yeah, be exactly. I'd love to see that. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Maybe I'll make that happen sometime. <laughs> <laughs> so well, so, me and my son, we like would watch Bat Dad clips and he thinks it's just hilarious. Right? That's awesome. So, that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to Bat Dad. <laughs> Besides Analog Forever, uh, or do you have any other projects going on? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I uh, worked with uh, Static HZ uh, zines last year with uh, my second edition of Searching for Stillness. Um, we, as always, say we're going to make a book, um, and it usually takes me a year longer than I expect. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty common. Yeah, I mean, I think last time I had 250 images, and we narrowed down to 50 that I shot from like 2015 to 2019. Wow. And it took me a long time to get something cohesive together only because if you've ever put to, a bit together or anyone else who has, uh, you know what images you want to use, but you just can't get the sequencing right. And then yeah. like, because one image throws off the sequencing, you have to like go back to the whole drawing board. And yeah. it's just, it's painstaking. And like, it's a labor of love and, uh, uh, I hope I didn't just say I'm working on a book because that'd be stupid. Because I just got. <laughs> we'll keep it. But uh, yeah. so yeah, but I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I like working with him. I'm really excited. Um, you know, I've been toying the, uh, with the idea of creating a, my own, you know, indie publishing house. But very cool. As my family and friends tell me, like I'm not sure how I would sleep if I did one more thing. <laughs> sure. So sure. Uh, and that'd be a big project. Really want to, yeah, I really want to. And I, my first book would be with Bastion. Nice. Uh, like easily done, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll, we'll see. And then, you know, of course, just personal work. I, I've always wanted to uh, do long exposures with my uh, mint camera on oh, the ocean. Fun. Never gotten around to it. I'm always, well, let me just take a step back. I'm a mountain guy, 100%. It's not because I don't love the beach, but there's people at the beach. Right. And I work with people. <laughs> so it's just, it's just, I, if given the option, I always want to go somewhere where there's, it's less crowded. So sure. there's like hike ten miles and you don't see anybody for a couple of days and it's, it's nice. Very cool. um, but I'd like to do that I, after I finish my net, like my third and final quote, searching for stillness book. Um, I may want to make a book called found it <laughs> and uh, do it at the beach. I think that'd be funny. That would be it. funny. That'd be awesome. Um, but that's really it. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of other things that I do outside of photography and my main job. Um, but I really think that takes up most of my time. Um, we, you know, every time I tell Michael, I write him an email at one o'clock at night and say, Hey man, why don't we do this? He's like, dude, like, like how, like we should start like a weekly podcast. And he's like, when are you, <laughs> when are you going to do that? Right. <laughs> so like, I, you know, we are a good balance between my impulsiveness and his, uh, how do you say, uh, pragmatism. Yeah, pragmatism. Absolutely. That, that's a good way of putting it. So he definitely keeps us grounded when, when I'm like, we should make merch and we should do this and we should do this. And he's like, why don't you, why don't you write next week's article first, man? You know? Sure. Yeah. So, so, it's good. It's good. <laughs> so photographically speaking, what is the worst idea you've ever had? The worst idea I've ever had? Oh, dude, like I, I, I remember this. So I, I went to like, we have like a neighborhood clubhouse area with a little pool and the HOA and there's like this thing and I had this girl standing like on this chair and I was like really into like digital long exposures back then and uh I like did her arms like you know how they do the flash thing mm -hmm. and like I made her have like six arms and then I after I got done I was just like this is just so stupid <laughs> I was like what am I trying to accomplish here besides like just opening the shutter and just light painting with like 
you know, it, it looked like a, I don't know, man. It was just, I, I don't know why that immediately comes to mind, but it, it was just terrible. It yeah. just wasn't good. There was no direction behind it. And I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we were just having some beers and opening shutters and around, <laughs> right? Sure. Uh, it was fine, but I think worst. I don't know. I got, you know, my, in my first book, I took a picture of this homeless gentleman. That I, I used to live on the coast and I used to drive about 45 minutes uh, from my home to, to work every day. And there was this guy who was always at the gas station I stopped to, I uh, stopped at. And we got, we got kind of friendly, like not, you know, we weren't friends, but like, you know, we kind of knew each other. And one day I just got done uh, photographing the tides and I was like in my suit, but I had like my pants rolled up and my shoes off and I was like all muddy and looking like super weird. Like we probably looked pretty similar at that point. Uh, not to make fun of him, but I, I did. I looked, I, I looked not, yeah, great. And uh, he like made a comment about my feet or something. And I was like, hey man, like, do you mind if I take your photograph, right? And I think to me, that was like a really cool connection that he kind of talked to me instead of like, I don't know, probably not like asking for money or anything. It was just being a human being, just having a conversation sure. with me and yeah. photographed him. And I, you know, back then I think it was people were, well, maybe people are becoming more sensitive now, but I got a lot of flack for that. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, was like, I can understand that. He's just a dude, you know, and they didn't know our history or not that we sure. had a long one, but you know, it was, I liked the picture and, um, which is interesting. And I think now what's so weird not to get political, but I think everyone's really scared of doing something wrong or yeah. saying the wrong thing. And it's hard because like, I, I think what's worse than being wrong is being inauthentic. And I think, yeah. you know, I said previously when we got started, like we all have our biases when it comes to selecting work, how we were raised, where we grew up, you know, what we were surrounded by. It's just, it's literally how life is. Sure. Right. Yeah. I think acknowledging it is like the first thing. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I would rather say like, Hey, I just really like, like this picture, you know, is, is okay. Like I'm not trying to defend it or even be on the offense. Like, I think it's okay. Just to be like, I just like this. Yeah. And that's okay. You know? And I, I just, I guess I encourage everybody not to like, I think council culture is kind of crazy. Yeah. So got a little deep there for a know, minute. <laughs> and, yeah, man. I don't know. I, I that's why I, I just, when I was thinking about that picture, that's what came to mind. And that's super cool. Yeah, I just wish people would just be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, either with Analog Forever or in your personal work, what is one question you always wished people would ask you? I think thank you <laughs> is the word. I don't think it's a question. And I think we get that a lot. But I think, uh, you know, with all things, you know, I don't think people understand how much work actually goes into something like what we do. Sure. Yeah. I think, you know, between the four of us, we spend 40 hours a week, 30 wow. hours a week, you yeah. know, between, so, I, and we, like, I hate saying like, oh, we do it for free, but and we do, but it's, it's not really the point. But I think sometimes like submissions don't get selected or we didn't do this route or we didn't do this route or you know, we're all kind of flying by the seat of our pants and we're doing a decent job for it being, you know, a, a, a moonlight gig. Yeah. I think when people would ask, like, how can I help would be a lot better than saying, uh, why didn't you do this? Sure. And I, I think we're, we're pretty transparent uh, about everything we do too. Like we've never hid anything that we do. Like uh, I went to uh, Barcelona to speak at Experimental Festival. Thanks, Pablo. Uh, last year in Barcelona and um, people were asking me like how we do submissions or uh, should I bother submitting places and I I think just like with all things in the world like you have to pick what you really want to do mm -hmm. and I think if a lot of people would start submitting after doing research instead of blanket submitting they'd have a lot more success with their work yeah so like oh yeah That's I know this really grid tip. has this bias and I probably shouldn't bother like and that, it sounds terrible, right? No, but, but it's, it's really not. true. It's just, it's just time management. And, you know, that comes from my day job. But I don't think people should go after, like, long shots that are unrealistic. Only long shots that yeah. they think they can slam dunk on eventually. Yeah, no, that's a I'm fantastic tip. Dreams, but just, just, you know, if this guy only curates black and white work and you're doing, like, film soup, maybe you don't, don't spend your time elsewhere, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. 
you know, because we get all kinds of crazy submissions, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm guilty of the same, but people don't read prompts a lot of the times. And, <laughs> right. And, uh, and it's or just try to justify it. why their work fits it, even when it really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I just, I really just want to encourage people to read the prompt and also like pick and choose where they spend their time because just like us, you know, I, I know 99% of our audience is not making any money from what they do. They do mm -hmm. it for the love of it. Yeah. And I think we get caught up in, I want to be in this magazine or I want to be known by these people or I want to feel cool or validated. And I think if people were just a little bit more grounded about how they choose to spend that time, they'd yeah. be happier with their own artwork. So that, that's some super awesome advice, really. I mean, yeah. But keep submitting, do it all the time. Like I, I'm on the flip side, like, uh, I mean, I, I've submitted to, you know, probably what, what, six or 700 submissions over 10 years, mm -hmm. like a lot. Yeah. So I mean, it is a numbers game. I don't want to say it's not, um, and you'll get lucky, you know, occasionally, but I, I, I've also had more success per, in my personal work, um, getting selected when I've, you know, done my research. Yeah, totally. Or ask a friend, go on LinkedIn, go on Facebook, see who you know that yeah. also knows these other people to say, Hey, what do you think about this? Yeah. Like you had, we're a community. We should use the community too. Totally. So, yeah. So I'm like not answering your questions at all, by the way, I'm just, no, you're actually doing so. a fantastic job. I love when it goes <laughs> okay. away and like, sure. I've got questions, but it's just to facilitate a conversation. So when we yeah. can get into things like this, I think it's really cool. So on that front, let, let's flip the script. Is there any questions you want to ask me? When did you start doing this in the isolation, <laughs> right? Because of COVID, like yep. tell me more about that. Uh, I have been toying with video for a while and, and I finally took the plunge and decided to, to do what every other person on the planet did and start a YouTube channel. Um, and I've been, it's kind of a mix of things. Um, I've done a lot of uh, tutorials on some of the weird film processes that I know, um, mm -hmm. how to get into film photography. And I've mixed it up with a lot of uh, travel stuff. Um, like you, I travel a lot um, and I like to document that. And then COVID came along and we kind of reached the point where I can't travel. I, I wasn't shooting a lot. And so I finally realized I've got such a great community of, of uh, photographers, especially film photographers that I know that, that it would be kind of fun to just get in a conversation and be able to share that on my channel. So you're, I think the third one I've done so far and it's been fascinating every time. Cool, man. That's really cool. And so uh, what I'm most interested in is your camera tattoos. You have camera tattoos, right? I do. I have quite a few of them. My whole uh, my whole right arm is a camera tattoo sleeve. Can we see it? Um, we'll see if uh, it's hard to hard to show, but I've got a Hasselblad 500 there. I've got a, let's see which ones you can see on the screen there. I have a old Kodak folder there. I've got a Yashica 635 there. There's a Leica on the inside of my elbow. There's a Pentax Spotmatic there. There's a Crown Graphic 4x5 up there. Um, and just about any time I can add one, I, I add another one. It's kind of a never-ending project. I've been doing it probably, boy, almost 10 years, I think, I've been working on, on my arm. What's the next one, man? I think my next one is going to be a Rolly 35. I've got a little spot on the inside of my wrist here, and it's a little camera, so I figure... Uh, It'll fit real nice there. What are you gonna, are you gonna do any filler work? Yeah, I plan to wrap it with a 35 millimeter film and 120 backer, um, just Rock to kind on. of fill in all the spaces. And, and if it works out, I may see if I can get images put in the 35 millimeter frames too, but they may end up being a little well, small, so I don't know if it'll work. Very cool. Thank you. You know, I love that like a lot of the analog guys like are also into like, not alternative culture, it's pretty mainstream now, but like, <laughs> tattoos and, and music and like a lot of the guys that i've talked to around my age group your age group like kind of were punk rock kids yeah in a way. i'm not sure if you were but yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know i mean it's weird when like you're talking about art and you're like yeah but it's also really cool to like like windmill kick people in the face on the show. <laughs> yeah right and uh you know and like and I, I probably don't look the type and i maybe none of us do but like my favorite thing is like my name is mike and like a lot of my buds would accuse me of being like Mike from SLC Punk, like the like the mm -hmm. boring guy that goes crazy, yep. you know. And uh, I've always kind of held on to that that 
despite how boring my day job is, the rest of my life can be so exciting. Sure. It's, it's funny how that's happened to a lot of us. I know somewhere in the world there exists photographs of me with a giant blue mohawk in a mosh pit. Uh-huh. Yeah. But as we get older, we mellow out a little, but we still kind of hold on to that punk rock ethos. And like, totally. I think it totally influences the art we do and then the way, way we live life. I mean, yeah. So you're, you're into motorcycles too, right? I very much am. Um, How I motorcycles and tattoos and your camera. Are you going to do like some awesome, like, like a uh, Hunter S Thompson, like, uh, hell's angels photo thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should, I've, uh, I've been for a few years, part of a motorcycle club called, uh, the rockers and okay. they are just a giant goofy bunch of vintage motorcycle enthusiasts from all walks of life. And they're not like, Oh, hell's angels, badasses. They're the funniest, goofiest, not take yourself seriously group of people on the entire planet. And I, for a while, wanted to do a photo session with them and just kind of document the goofy bikes they ride and their goofy personalities in kind of that Hunter S. Thompson, Hells Angels sort of style, just parody it a little bit. And I was talking to some of them a little bit right before COVID started to kind of start that project. And then it's kind of been put on hold because of that. But we'll see. Maybe someday. <laughs> you should do it, man. I, like, I've always had a like an fascination with motorcycles and I, i've always wanted a cruiser my whole life and when i say whole life i mean like the last five years since i've realized i'm getting old um <laughs> but uh, i really want one man and i you know everyone well me being like the impulsive dude i am everyone's like nah dude, like, <laughs> i shouldn't do that but uh yeah i really like that so i don't know i just think like you're just super cool man with your like your tattoo <laughs> well thank you i appreciate like, that i was just like a oh, man like i wish so it's well, really cool maybe someday you can come up here and, and i'll uh, i'll let you try one of mine out <laughs> that's cool man and you like uh what do you call them cafe racers that's cafe racers know? yeah yeah all of my bikes are old uh usually japanese bikes right now i've got a uh 80 suzuki gs 750 cafe bike uh which is fast and a little stupid and very loud and then I've also got a uh, 74 Yamaha RD 350 uh, cafe racer. That's uh, fun because it's a two stroke bike. And since this is photography, I won't get too much into the difference between two stroke and four stroke engines, but uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's badass, right? Yeah. Cool. It's a lot of fun. Awesome, man. So how, how does like, I know we talked about a little bit about like work life balance. Like, how does that work for you with your art? Like what do, what do you do during the day? Can I ask you that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, during the day, I am a senior network engineer for a company that uh, writes soft, the software that controls a good chunk of the financial and medical uh, backends. Um, so cool. it's very, very, very technical. Um, and so art kind of became my photography specifically became my way of balancing that. I'm one of those people that gets ultra technical on the one end and ultra art on the other end. And, and if I don't balance that out, it, it's, it gets rough. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. I get that. That's very cool. Uh, any projects in the works photo wise that, I mean, I know COVID's kind of put a damper on that stuff, but yeah. Like COVID- how, how, I'm sorry. Well, is sidebar to that question is, where exactly? You live in Portland, right? Yep. Yep. I'm in Portland, Oregon. So how is like the COVID situation there is probably a lot different from, I'm in Fresno, which mm-hmm. is like in central California, right? So I'm sure maybe different, like the whole. It, it's, been, it's been a weird thing to see. Um, we have, we're, we're, we're on the liberal spectrum. Um, so we have a lot of people who are very, we're going to wear masks at all times and we're going to lock down. And for quite a while, we were on just about full lockdown um, and they've loosened things up a little bit, but we also have a, a pretty good contingent of, of uh, rights, freedom people and, and more rural people who are very, I don't want to wear a mask. I don't want you to infringe on my rights to travel. And so we've been kind of yo-yoing up and down from uh, infection rate. Um, and like I had mentioned uh, mentioned to you a while ago, I actually caught it myself, um, though I'm, I've got no idea where I got it. Uh, we had gone for a uh, socially distant vacation to Montana, where I think I was in contact with all of maybe 10 people, and somehow one of them must have had it. Um, so it's weird now that I'm kind of 
immune to it now because I've had it. I've got the antibodies. And so it's weird to go, well, maybe I could go do things, but I will probably get ostracized by people if I do. And so it's, it's been weird. It's been weird. And it's photographically, it's been frustrating. Um, I can't go out and shoot. I had, I think my third session for the year a week ago, which is unheard of for me. I'm usually in the summer, I'm shooting every weekend somewhere or something. And so it's been, yeah. it's been rough. It's been hard to get back into it. And, and that's part of why I've been doing this series is it's a way to do things photographically without having to go do things photographically. Totally, totally. Uh, that's, sucks man like yeah it's weird we're like i'm like in the opposite like you know we're i live in a very conservative town mm -hmm. right with you know it's probably like maybe yours is 80 20 i'm 20 80 right mm -hmm. but at the same time like it's hard because like i'm like i'm so busy working on like magazine stuff and like being in the community like i'm kind of oblivious to like some of the stuff going on in the world to an extent like maybe a year ago I was watching a lot of the news and got into like doom scrolling and like reading about like collapse of the environment and all the bugs died. And I'm like, man, I shouldn't even do a magazine. I'm like, we're all going to die anyway. <laughs> and like, oh man, it's kind of in a bad spot for a while. And, you know, I, I think we all kind of get in that pattern sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think especially but, creative people tend to be more prone to that even. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, I'm an obsessive guy, right? Like I get really focused on something and I think it's hard for me when like I hear people like, yeah, I just can't get out and shoot. Yeah. Like it's like the saddest thing ever. Cause being lucky, I, you know, I can drive an hour into Yosemite. Oh uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, it's not that I go there often cause there's too many people. <laughs> so this has been awesome. I, uh, in case you haven't noticed viewers, my uh, camera's battery died. And so I've had to switch to my uh, laptops built in. So that means that we're probably uh, making this interview a little too long. So I'm going to say, thank you, Michael. This has been awesome. I really appreciated talking with you. I appreciate you taking the time. This chat's been great. Um, any final words? Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, if you want to check out Analog Forever Magazine, you can go to analogforevermagazine.com. And to do this at the end, if you use the code Kelly is awesome, you'll get a dollar off your order. Of <laughs> well, thank you very much, Michael. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. If any of you viewers have any questions, um, you can say it down in the comments and I'd be happy to get back to you. Uh, be sure to check out Analog Forever. It is by far one of the coolest magazines I've seen in a long time. I heartily recommend it. And thanks for watching. <laughs>